You've noticed when the left fights back against the right on subjects like school indoctrination, they usually just resort to screaming racist. That's one of their best uh, comebacks. There's not much else they can really say. Virginia State Delegate Nick Freitas had a great response to all of that. Take a listen. The initial response was, oh, it's not there. And then when they saw evidence that it was, based off of what their kids were coming home and saying to them, and they went back and reissued the concern, then they got told, oh, well, then you must be a racist. Because that has been the repeated narrative coming from certain members of the other side of the aisle. And there's been a lot of times where we've sat here politely and just took it. Mr. Speaker, not this time. It's a very good speech in its entirety. So good, we asked Nick Freitas to join us tonight. A Green Beret combat veteran who served two tours in Iraq. Nick, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, your entire speech was, was really great. Do, do you think that things are, are starting to swing back in the right direction in your state? Oh, absolutely. And there's a number of reasons for that. I think one of the things that a lot of parent, parents and just voters in general understood about this last election cycle is that when they would bring forth a legitimate, a valid concern, and we're not talking about conservative parents, we're talking about parents that voted for Joe Biden. They were met with Democrat representatives that then claimed they were racist if they disagreed with them. And they're tired of that. So many people are just absolutely fed up with this narrative that if you don't agree with the latest woke agenda, that that somehow makes you a bad and evil person. And they fought back and they demonstrated how upset they were with it by their vote. And it seems like many of my Democrat colleagues still have not gotten the message. Isn't that amazing? I mean, it's and, and, and what Virginia, I think what really happened is they got really scared when a Republican took that state. What I love about it is that that's where all these D.C. elitists, not all of them, but a lot of them live. Uh, and so now they feel like they're underneath this umbrella. They're, they're being impacted by that election. And they never would have thought in a million years Yunkin was going to take it, and he did. Oh, no, they, they thought they were on the ascendancy in Virginia. And, and here's the problem. Before they took power, they ran a lot on good intentions. And then they got power. And then their policies went into effect. And parents didn't like it. And police didn't like it. And people didn't like how their communities weren't as safe. They didn't like their businesses going under. And so they rejected it. And I think it's very important to remember that Jason Mearis, Winsome Sears, Glenn Youngkin, they didn't run on some sort of abstract campaign promises. They were very specific about what they were going to do. They were going to give parents more choice. They were going to give you more control over how you live your life, how you run your business. They were going to not let our own energy policy be dictated by California. They said they were going to do these things. They got into office, and now that they're doing them, the Democrats are absolutely losing their minds. And to get up on that floor and suggest that Glenn Youngkin is somehow a racist or a segregationist or not a real Christian because he's doing the exact things that he promised voters he would do is absurd. And quite frankly, it's insulting, not just to Glenn Youngkin or those of us in the General Assembly. It's insulting to everyone that sent us there who have legitimate concerns and who want to live in a free country where they're not having every aspect of their life or their children's education dictated to them by progressive mm -hmm. politicians that think they're smarter than everyone else. <laughs> it's so well said, and their frustration is palpable. I mean, watching the media, watch everybody react to this has just been priceless. We're hearing multiple reports in, in some schools, parents who are upset over their kids. They, they send them, they don't want to wear a mask in school, even though you don't have to wear a mask in school, from what I understand in Virginia. But the kids are being forced to segregate from other students. One student had to sit in an auditorium by himself all day, apparently. Uh, he said he saw a teacher once. He learned nothing. He just isolated in a big room. Um, are you hearing about this? What can be done about that? Well, I'll tell you, one of the biggest things that, again, Governor Youngkin ran on was the idea of school choice. It was about giving parents more options over their children's education. Yes. And this is one of the primary examples of why we need it and why it's so popular. I find it fascinating that the same people that are preaching tolerance and diversity don't mind putting students in this sort of situation or want to insist on telling parents that they will be the ones that are solely responsible for determining what their kid's education looks like, what their curriculum looks like, and they want very little, if any, input from parents. Now, you can that with what the Youngkin administration is doing and what Republicans are trying to do. We're not trying to cram a particular curriculum down any child's throat. We're not trying to tell left-wing or progressive parents that you have to educate your child a certain way. Mm -hmm. We want each parent to have more input for their child so that we can actually have an education system that is diverse and responsive to the actual customers of education, which are the students, as opposed to the teachers unions, which have dominated this conversation for far too long. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, the, biggest, the biggest problem with school is that it's public, it's government, and they think they can just do it any way they want, and you have nothing you can say, just pay us the taxes and shut up. And uh, you guys are showing them a much different path, and I love it. 
Nick Freitas, uh, thank you so much. A Virginia State delegate uh, with a great speech. Thank you so much for taking the time. We do appreciate it. Thank you.